The aftermath of yet another argument between Catherine and Peter is the setting for the third season of Hulu's historical comedy drama The Great. Although he has done something reprehensible, Catherine is prevented from killing Peter by her love for him. They both concur that some issues in their marriage need to be resolved if they don't want to get trapped in a never-ending cycle of loving and wanting to murder each other. As Catherine attempts to transform Russia into the nation she has always wished it would be, things begin to heat up under her rule, but not in the way she had anticipated. By the end of the season, Catherine has through a turbulent arc that challenges her politically and personally and causes her to question whether she was ever qualified to reign. Here are the final events and their implications for Catherine the Great's rule. Spoilers ahead. The Great Season 3 Plot Synopsis Although Catherine didn't kill Peter, she did stab the man who looked like him, which undermines their marriage trust. Peter controls his violent desires as they make an effort to start again and makes an effort to be the husband Catherine wants him to be. Peter, meanwhile, feels ignored and useless as she becomes increasingly preoccupied with legal problems. He is eager for Peter to become an ordained minister, but Catherine prevents this, leaving Peter wondering if he is a good parent. Hugo and Agnes, meantime, create commotion to persuade Peter to attack Sweden so they might retake their nation. Catherine tries to create new laws in the meantime, but the nobility obstruct her at every move. Even the serfs appear to be uneasy about the independence Catherine wants for them since it appears that they are too accustomed to the status quo. She and Archie continue to disagree over ordination of Paul, and in an effort to correct this, he inserts Pugashev into the conversation. Peter perishes in the meantime after plunging into a frozen river, and Catherine finds it difficult to deal with the loss. The great season 3 ending, does Archie die? Archie realized he had no choice but to find a way to cooperate with Catherine after she was crowned the Empress. It was critical for him to remain close to, watch over, and have influence over Catherine since he was aware of her progressive tendencies and her desire to exclude the church from the picture. He helps her understand the power that the church wields over people and why Catherine must adhere to it every time she makes an effort to stray from God and religion. One issue where Catherine and Archie disagree is the ordaining of Paul. Ordaining entails informing the populace that, like Peter and those who came before him, Paul has been chosen by God to rule Russia. Catherine, who believes in meritocracy, refuses to demand anything of her son because she doesn't even know if he'll be qualified for the position. Archie argues that ordaining her son is advantageous for both the church and Catherine politically, but Catherine won't budge. When everything else fails, Archie conjures up a situation that compels Catherine to realize her folly. He dispatches Pugashev around the nation to stir up opposition to the Empress by posing as Peter III. Pugashev turns out to be quite good at his profession, so he fuels the fire. However, when violence breaks out all throughout the nation, things spiral out of control, and the innocent hoax develops into a rebellion. Archie keeps trying to convince Catherine to work with Pugashev in order to ordain Paul as part of the arrangement. Mariel ultimately turns on him and tells Catherine everything, though. The Empress gives the order to beat Archie, deprive him of his post, and bury him alive out of rage. In order to rally the church behind her and reinforce her claim to the throne, she first has him sign a declaration. She also asks him to sign a document that will set all serfs under the church free and distribute the property the church owns to them. Because of this, she may release millions of serfs without consulting the nobles. She hoped that by conducting this study, she would be able to observe in a controlled setting how the serfs would respond to their newfound freedom and would persuade the nobility to release their serfs. Archie is currently buried alive and would still be there if Mariel hadn't intervened. She lied to Catherine about his treachery in an effort to further her own status. Although it benefits her, Mariel never wanted her cousin to pass away. She digs the grave after the guards have gone home and is thrilled to discover Archie is still alive. He's still alive. How does Pugashev's rebellion end? None of them anticipated that Pugashev's statements would be heard by the whole public and grow into something much greater and deadly, even though Archie hired him to speak out against Catherine. Pugashev observed a tide of support and adoration from the populace as he went about spreading misinformation and hatred towards Catherine. He understood that his words had influence, and that by pretending to be Peter III, he might actually mobilize the populace and advance on the palace. The common impersonator had a chance to ascend to the position of Russian emperor. They would not have been able to seize the throne if it had been someone else. However, Pugashev could get away with it because of how much he resembled Peter. In the climactic episode, he is discovered, and rather than having him executed, Catherine chooses to have him go across the country where he will retract his statements and admit that he is actually a double for Peter. Archie kills Pugashev before the plot can be carried out, leaving Catherine with a much more serious issue. It was previously acknowledged that executing Pugashev without first consulting the populace might make him into a martyr. While he was still alive, the insurrection was focused and manageable. Without him, the insurrection would split off, which would be considerably harder. Other nobles would attempt to fill the power gap left by Pugashev's absence, calling Catherine's legitimacy into question and making things even more problematic for her. When Pugashev dies, Catherine realizes she was unable to stop the rumors after trying to stop them by getting him to confess the truth. She thus encircles them. She orders Maxim to propagate the rumor that he killed Pugashev with his hands by going out into the community. 
she dispatches Velmentov to a distant region of the nation to share the true account of Peter's demise. To disseminate a contrary rumor and put down the uprising with the force of a thousand cannonballs, she dispatches Petrov to Moscow, where Pugachev's supporters had assembled in large numbers. She also spreads other rumors regarding the many methods that Peter passed away. She may be the daughter of Peter the Great, according to one of those rumors. A single rumor might turn out to be true, but a thousand different versions would only result in stories and gossip. By doing this, Catherine would maintain sovereignty over the story and be free to utilize it whatever she pleased later. Catherine intended to put an end to a rebellion like this once and for all in addition to getting Pugachev and Peter out of the way. She came up with a new strategy since she didn't want to deal with the same legitimacy issue again. Knowing the power the church wields over society, she has Archie sign a proclamation requesting that people look for signs that Catherine has been given the title of Empress by the grace of God. Her royal astronomer had previously informed her that an upcoming comet will pass past the Earth, and be visible to the naked eye. Knowing that such events were often interpreted as omens, he sought to enlighten people with facts from science. He desired that people learn about astronomy. In a perfect world, Catherine would have happily complied, but she has a nation to rule, so she does it for herself. The most effective strategy to persuade the general populace that the comet's rule is God's desire is to claim that a sign from the skies is going to appear since they are unaware of the comet. Once that's shown, nobody will contest her validity. Why does Catherine cut her hair? What does her dance mean? After tidying up the immediate shambles in her rule, Catherine emerges from her emotional fog. She appears in the final scene clothed entirely in black. She is dancing her heart out as the comet passes and the crowd applauds for her because she recently cut her hair. What does this represent? Catherine had always felt she was meant to rule Russia. She believes that being the empress is her destiny and that everything in her life has led up to this point. She may be well-intentioned but she is young and naive. When the coup is successful and she is finally in control of Russia, she finds that the job is more difficult than she had anticipated. Obtaining the throne is one thing. Persuading the populace to accept the new way of doing things is quite another. In the third season, things spiral out of control, especially following Peter's passing, and Catherine begins to doubt her prediction of fate. If she was never intended to be Russia's ruler, she has brought about instability by imposing her reign on the nation. When the issue of ordaining Paul is raised, Catherine makes the case that a ruler should be chosen through a meritocracy rather than by God. She is compelled to question whether she was ever worthy to hold the throne as her own rule crumbles in front of her. Orlo begins to doubt her as well since despite having all the power at her disposal, she is unable to complete any of the tasks she had in mind. She is charged with being sidetracked, becoming lost in her fantasy, and failing to do what is required of her. He questions whether he made the wrong choice and whether Catherine was just as bad a ruler as Peter. Catherine is left to doubt this even more after Peter's passing, leaving everything to chance. She begins to play Russian roulette in the hope that she will pass away if she is supposed to. If not, she will live every time she picks up a pistol and shoots herself. She always manages to survive, as luck would have it. When she picks up the loaded gun for the first time, a man storms in and attempts to shoot her. She shoots the intruder with the gun instead of shooting herself. She is startled awake by this surprise and begins to doubt whether she has truly been chosen by God. In the end, Catherine comes to the conclusion that being God's chosen is not the only standard for a good ruler. She will have to put in some effort. She will keep failing, but ultimately she will figure out how the court works and become a better leader of the nation. She had been chained before Peter passed away. She felt restricted, and no matter how hard she tried to keep him away from the court, he always managed to find a way in. He would also consistently challenge her power by mocking the new laws she intended to enact and breaking them just as she was declaring that they were universal. She was already informed of this by Orlo. She would be restrained, he assured her, by Peter. In order for her to dominate as she desired, Peter had to leave. Because she is in mourning in the final scene, Catherine dresses in all black. She had previously experienced denial, refusing to acknowledge Peter's departure. Then she descended into melancholy, repeatedly endangering her life and showing little concern about whether someone like Elizabeth might usurp her as monarch. But eventually, as her thoughts begin to clear and she realizes the gravity of her predicament, she comes to terms with this new truth. Although losing her husband will always be painful, she has no right to give up on her great love, Russia. Wearing black denotes acceptance of Peter's passing. She will mourn before moving on to fulfill her duty to the nation. She is also showing signs of genuinely coming into her own when she chops off her hair and dances in public. She was the innocent child bride when she ascended to the throne, and others believed that she had stretched out for something that wasn't intended for her. She was easily tricked by people, and she was never able to achieve her true goals. She was weak, and with just one strong leadership move from someone with even a remote claim to the throne, she might fall, losing everything. At the start of season 3, Catherine admitted she lacked organizational skills and desired instruction in the legal and political systems. She had never considered the aspect of her employment where the ends justified the methods. Because she thought there was kindness in everyone, she imagined she could change them. But at the end, she realizes that if she wants to defend her country, she would have to be ruthless, calculating, cunning, and even lying. She needs people to fear and obey her rather than to love her. 
She is prepared to lead the nation forward because she has acknowledged that aspect of herself. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.